How is it going guys? This is Psyche and welcome to my channel where I make educational videos on Identity 5. Today we're going to be going over one of the most highly requested videos ever since I made the rescue guide against how to save from every hunter and that is the basement guy. Now the basement there are a lot of complex things about it and one of the biggest things about basement is only a few survivors can rescue from the basement. Most survivors should not go rescue from the basement. And that's just because the basement has too much walking involved and you need some sort of item to speed yourself up through the stairs and get to the chair without having any problems. Now there are some basics that you need to know about the basement and how to do a basement safe properly and you're going to be using these four tips all the time anytime you do any basement rescue. Now the first tip is never go near the sides of basement and the reason you don't want to go near the sides of the basement is because there is something in the game, it is a bug, where if the hunter drops from any height in the game after hitting you, they have no recovery on their attack, meaning they get a free hit on you and you're going to have to take a second hit. Even if you're mercenary, taking two hits to do a basement rescue is never good. If you go near it, the hunter will just take advantage of it. They'll hit you while moving backwards and they'll fall down and they will have no recovery on their attack and you're going to be screwed. You may as well give up on the basement rescue at that point. Number two is always take the stairs, never jump down. You know how I was talking about never go near the sides of the basement? Yeah, this includes that. Don't jump down and some people think they're really clever you know they're just gonna jump down and they're gonna skip the stairs and they they think they created a shortcut for themselves no a hunter will purposefully stay by the sides of the stairs so that if you do jump down they're gonna jump down with you and they're gonna hit you and they're gonna have no recovery so you should always take the stairs don't just jump down that's a bad play Number three, only survivors with tide rescue. Under most circumstances, under 99% of circumstances, if someone is going to rescue from basement, you have to have tide turner. If you don't rescue with tide turner, you're going to die. Both you and your teammates are going to die. Both of you. And not only that, you're both going to end up in basement. So you're only making the situation worse, and at that point, it would be a loss if that were to happen. Now, I'll go into more in depth about why you need tide turner. And it actually has to do with tip number four, which is use Tide Turner to help the person you rescued escape from the basement. Now, you cannot do tip number four if you don't have Tide Turner. Now, what you need to do with Tide Turner is the person who got rescued off of chair, their goal is to not be in basement when they go down again. And Tide Turner will help that. Tide Turner will make sure they don't go down for the next 20 seconds. It's like Tide Turner was made for basement so that if you can't go down, you can't get chaired in basement. Now, a lot of people, when they're exiting basements, they have this problem of, well, now the hunter can just drop from a height and they could hit you with no recovery, right? This is something you cannot avoid. The person off of chair is likely going to be a kiter. They're not going to have an ability that just speeds them up randomly. They're going to need to just tank the hit and they're going to need to run out. Meanwhile, the rescuer, assuming you're playing mercenary, you're just going to elbow pad past and there's no way the hunter's hitting you with no recovery. Always, always, if you're the rescuer doing a basement save, the priority is for the person to get out that you rescued. And the priority for you, meanwhile, is to not take two hits. You do not want to take two hits, otherwise it's still technically a fail. Even if the person escapes basement, they're still going to be put on chair. At least they won't be in basement anymore. But you don't want to get double hit either. And I'm going to go over more specific ways on how you can make that happen. But for now, just know that you cannot escape that the person you rescued off of chair cannot escape that double hit you, they are going to need to tank it and they're just going to need you to run out of basement whatever they do just don't be in basement all right i went over the importance of rescuing with tide turner now that that means that most survivors in this game cannot do a basement rescue for that reason i mean you could if you want but you're not going to survive without some additional help if you're going to do a basement rescue these should be the survivors who are doing it priestess grave digger Mercenary, first officer, forward, coordinator, and perfumer if you have tide turner. Perfumer, you shouldn't go down there in basement if you don't have tide turner. Otherwise, it's okay, but then again, you should let the mercenary go do it because he is better at doing it. Or if you have a forward doing it or a coordinator, they're all better at doing it than perfumer. But for the meantime, let's go over who can do a basin rescue, but it's just super risky. And that is mechanic. Mechanic is the only other survivor that should be wearing tide turner or at least can be she doesn't have to there's two rescuers 
but doing the basin rescue with her is just a big risk and mostly because she has no ability to help her with this rescue the bot doesn't count the bot's going to be decoding and it doesn't make sense to use the robot and the basin i don't even see how you can make that happen basically you should let your other rescuer do the basement if you can otherwise it might not be the brightest idea it really depends on the scenario like i said you can go but it's risky now who shouldn't go everyone else everyone else every other survivor should not be doing basin rescues under most circumstances and this means that even if you're a prospector using tide turner i still don't really recommend you should be using first of all tide turner on prospector and second of all your items really don't protect you that much coming in and out of basement it's basically the same idea as mechanic just because you have tide turner you do have a chance but coming in will be a big struggle wildling is just as his name suggests, a wild card. He is a wild card because he's said to be a rescuer and he's said to be a protector. He's supposed to defend his teammates, but he's terrible at both of those things. He doesn't decode well. He doesn't protect his teammates well. He doesn't help them escape from balloons and he's terrible against basement rescues. If you have a pig to help you, sure. But most likely your hog is not going to be around or it's going to be dead from the last time you try to protect your teammate from balloons. It's just going to be really tough. Just don't use wildling. Now that I went over who can go rescue from basements, I'm still going to tell you how to rescue as a non-rescue character because there are going to be times when the ciphers are primed and the only people who can go to rescue are a non-rescue characters. It's going to be vital that you know how to do a proper basement rescue if you're going to have a chance of winning the game. Now, it's very unlikely because of that double hit outside the basement when you're coming out, but there's still a chance as long as you know how to come inside the basement. So the first step is to come to the basement as soon as possible. You do not want to be late. Remember, if you're not a rescue character, I almost guarantee that you don't have an ability that helps you speed yourself up like Mercenary does or like Gravedigger or First Officer does with their abilities. So you need to be getting to basement as quickly as possible. Don't even worry that you're a little bit early compared to the chair timer. Just know that since the ciphers are primed, all that matters is you get the rescue off. Number two is get as close to the basement without being seen. This is a step process. You have to come to the basement, but you also have to not get seen from far away. If you do get seen from far away, there's going to be problems because, like I said, you have to run down the stairs. If you get hit outside the basement, you have to then run down the stairs and then run through the basement. You could get unlucky if the chair is really bad, far in the basement. That's why it's important you don't get seen from far. Now, the the best place to get seen, the allowable distance where you can get seen is right outside the stairs. So if you get hit outside the stairs with no recovery, as long as it's relatively close, not too far off, you'll be fine. You should get the save off. But make sure while you're going into the basement, while you're trying to get as close as possible, once you reach the basement, you don't want to get hit from above while you're trying to enter it. It's... It's going to have to require some baiting, but it shouldn't be too difficult. You might have some trouble if it's a white wuching, and in that case, you might be uh, messed up. Because I'm not going to lie, he has a really big hitbox. But most other hunters, you shouldn't have that much difficulty trying to bait them. That's why you need to come there as soon as possible. So you can have some time to try to bait the hunter and get them to um, drop down the stairs so you can get to the chair. Use your knowledge about the hunter to do a proper chair rescue. Depending on the hunter, the chair rescue might go a little bit differently than any other hunter. I made a rescue video about this, how to rescue from every hunter. At this point, now that you're in the basement, now that you're next to the person, next to the chair, you're just going to need to use your knowledge about the hunter to do a proper chair rescue. Watch my rescue video for more info. In fact, most of the times for tip number four, you may not even need to use your knowledge about the hunter because most hunters will not even try to hit you until um, you do the rescue and then they'll start walking outside the basement and try to double hit you outside the basement. Which and number five, if the hunter tries to double hit you outside the basement, which they will, you need to stay inside the basement. Don't get close to the outside of the basement where the hunter can drop down. And you need to stay inside and you need to heal the person who's been on chair. Because like I said earlier, the chance of you escaping without being double hit is zero. Unless the hunter does a massive mistake, there's no way no one's getting hit without um, a no recovery attack. You're just going to have to accept that someone's going to get hit with no recovery. Now... How do you counter this if someone's going to get double hit? What you need to do is you need to heal each other up in the basement while the hunter is trying to wait you out. Now, because the cyphers are primed, everyone's just waiting on you to make the next move. And the hunter is waiting on you to make the move. So that leaves you to have free time in the basement to heal. And it forces the hunter to make a move. Now, really, this forces the hunter to make the move on you. 
And if they don't do anything, you'll just successfully heal up and you can run outside the base and you can let them hit you for no recovery. It doesn't matter because you're still going to be alive. And in, in the case where you wouldn't have been full health, they would have knocked you down immediately after the activation because they had no recovery. Especially if it's a hunter with detention, that means now one of you for sure will die immediately after the activation. This way, it secures that neither of you die without recovery. And that both of you can escape and get, even though you'll get double hits still, the second hit will have recovery, so you'll be fine. I know, that was a lot of information to digest. That's why rescuing as a non-rescue character is so hard, it's so difficult. You know, it will be just so much simpler if a rescue character wins. Before I move on any further on how to do rescues in basements, I have to say that it's a lot of the time it's actually not a good idea to rescue from basement in the first place. If the person did not do at least a two cipher kite, if people didn't finish their ciphers up to 80%, 90%, and like let's say the mercenary isn't at like 70%, if people are like 50, 50, and 40, those are your three cipher progress, you should not even go for the basement rescue. You're going to be risking too much to do a successful basement rescue. So I would recommend just don't even go for the re basement rescue. If the person just ends up in basement, you're going to have to let them die if they did a bad kite. If they did a good kite, then you're going to need to go rescue them because you have a chance of winning as long as you do the rescue properly. And so here we go. How to rescue as a rescue character. Now, the biggest thing about being a rescue character is you have an item that makes you super mobile. That means if you're a mercenary, you can just elbow pad down the stairs off of the edge of the basement. But yeah, use them to get in and out. You want to use one to get in so that way you completely avoid the hunter from double hitting you. You may need to bait it out a little bit because they could get lucky and they could drop down the same time you elbow pad. So don't do it brainlessly. Just be careful of that. But the elbow pad moves so fast, it's going to be very unlikely. Now, while inside, you just use your knowledge to rescue against the hunter. Same thing. If you don't know how to rescue against the hunter, I have a rescue guide about it. Now, while escaping, you cannot take a double hit. Do not take a second hit because if you're a rescue character rescuing, then chances are the ciphers are not primed. You do not have the luxury as like the non-rescue character in the only rescue scenario where they should rescue from a basement is when ciphers are primed. But as a rescue character, you're not going to have this option. You're going to have to do basement rescues when there's going to be three or two ciphers left. And you're going to need to do them right. So while escaping, you cannot take a second hit. Now, thankfully, it's not going to be too hard if you're a mercenary. If you're a mercenary, you can just elbow patch straight out. Very simple. I'll show a clip on how to do that as well. It's just a straight path going up. Not that hard to mess up. Now, if you're not a mercenary or you're not a gravekeeper and you can't use another shovel, you can't use another watch, then what you need to do is you want the person with tie turner to walk out. You want them to tank the no recovery hit. And what this means is the person with tie turner, the person that the hunter wants to target is running away and you're just staying inside basement. So basically, if you stay inside the basement and you never give the hunter that option to hit you with no recovery, then what that means is the person who you rescued gets to walk out and the hunter has to follow them because otherwise if they don't follow them, they're, either, they're probably going to lose the game. The hunter will. However, hunters know not to do this. So what they're going to do is they're going to let you stay inside the basement. They're going to let you off the hook and they're going to follow the person that, with Ty Turner because they already hit them. They hit them with no recovery. They see you're hiding in basement and they don't have time to chase you. They don't. So they have to go after their person that they're that they're camping, that they're tunneling, and you get off the hook free without ever having to risk anything. Now, you could do the same thing with mercenary. I prefer not to just because, you know, what if the hunter does do that thing where for some reason they do come after you? Would have just It would have just been safer to just elbow pad out and never give them that option in the first place. Do not do this strategy when the ciphers are prime because then the person coming off of the um, chair, even if they have tight turner and they get hit once and they activate, that means you're still in basement. And the hunter now is the attention. They're going to come after you and knock you down. So don't do that when the ciphers are primed. That's not a good idea because then the hunter will want to come after you because now they just need anybody on the chair. That is pretty much everything you need to know about how to do a basement rescue. The basics, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, who should do the rescue basement, when should a non-rescue character go even though they shouldn't most of the time, and how to do it as a rescue character, which is what you should be prioritizing. Don't worry so much about the non-rescue portion of this guide. It's just in rare circumstances where absolutely no one else can go and rescue. Now that I've explained all the basics to you guys... I want to show you guys a quick montage of every 
portal or shovel location as Gravekeeper or Priestess. There is no doubt that these two survivors next to Mercenary are the next best thing to doing basement rescues because they can go directly down into the basement. Now, Gravekeeper, you actually leave a hole when you fall down and now the hunter can actually double hit you if you'd make that hole next to them. And that is not what you want to do. That just results in the same thing as giving them a free hit when, when you're going down the basement. So it's optimal that you know where to dig down as Gravekeeper. Not so much as Priestess, but I still recommend you know where to portal down as Priestess. So you're not just portaling who knows where and might get hit in the process. In the meantime, sit back and watch the montage. And that is just about everything that has to do with Basin Rescues. Now, obviously, there are slight variances in each hunter and who you're rescuing against. Let's say that be a Ripper or maybe a Guard 26. There are big differences between those two. Really, Guard 26 is like the one hunter where I would suggest you should absolutely not do the Basin Rescue if it was, if it was a mediocre kite. Just let the person die. Other than that, that wraps up pretty much everything that has to do with base and rescue. I know 
Like I said, there are a bunch of hunters that this has to do with, but doing that for every hunter for every basin rescue, it's an exponential amount of number of different gameplays to show. That is just something each of you will have to learn on your own as you progress through the game. For now, I wish you the best of luck for every basin rescue you do in the future, and I hope this guide helps you out to do them more consistently and successfully. Take care, guys. This has been Psyche.